Hi, Ross and Marcio. Ross and Marcio. Ross and Marcio. Marcio and Ross. Congrats. Congrats. Congratulations. 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 On 100 episodes. 100. 100. 100 episodes. Of Bridge of the Atlantic. I hope you enjoyed your telegram from the Quaid. 100 episodes. Wow. Man, that's amazing. Amazing. Holy shit! I really didn't think you'd make it this far. That is incredibly impressive. That is not a small feat. Very few podcasts ever get there. Incredibly inspiring. That is a big, big win. You guys kick booty and i'm so proud of you guys so proud of you guys so pumped for you guys let's just keep this thing going forever we love you guys so much couldn't happen to two better people you guys have been consistent the work you do is amazing thank you for your support of the music community thank you for doing what you guys do keep rocking it i love bridge the atlantic i never miss an episode congratulations you guys to a hundred more we love you guys wow hope they've been as much fun to make as they are to watch hey guys Welcome to Bridget. I don't think I am starting it off this time, am I? Okay. Hey, I'll do it. I'll do it. Hey, guys. Welcome to Bridget. I can't. <laughs> Marcio, our show is called Bridge the Atlantic. Say after me, Bridge. Hey, guys. Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic. This is, as you can probably already tell, a bit of a different episode that we're bringing to you guys today um it is a holiday special a little bit different than usual yeah that that would be probably the most accurate way to describe it um i'm not gonna tell you how many times marcio attempted to say the name of our show which is written on his shirt oh it's fine you know what we're just gonna leave it right in there we left it in there they they can they can just see all my glory of trying so they're really they're getting times. an insight into what this show is actually like behind the scenes and, this is uh, true and if you're you know, watching the, right now you're gonna you're gonna see that i'm just gonna go ahead and do it i'm i'm gonna wear i'm gonna I, i'm wearing a snuggie I, i'm going to wear a he's fucking done snuggie that's, that's i've done it that's it this is he's done it you know i don't know why he's done but he's done it if if you're listening on uh if you're listening to the audio right now you're gonna want to go over to our website yeah you're or, really or YouTube missing out and uh You'll actually see me wearing a snuggie right now. This this is what this is, this is cozy though. It's cold. It's, it's it winter. It's a bit more of a Halloween kind yes, of this is snuggie true. than this is Christmas, true. This but... is like a Halloween, but this is my version of a Halloween. Oh, this is my version of a, of a of a holiday snuggie because it has skulls on it. But it's still a wintry holiday thing, though. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So hey, I've got I've got a scarf too. Here, let me put the scarf on top. Yeah, you can't forget the scarf. So mm. Put that on top. Come on, it, guys. It'll balance everything out. It's like a nightmare before Christmas type of thing. It's like you know, a Halloween ha- holiday type thing. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Not Does really, that but no? we're going with it. Apparently. Okay, cool. So uh, in case uh, this is the first time you're listening to this, which I doubt. Um, I'm sorry if this is the first time you've been listening to our show. <laughs> I should probably let you know that I am singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist Marcin Um Not going to go on the whole spiel today because most likely you already know who we are. If you are listening to our holiday special, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, we yeah. think so, but who knows? You may be a first time yeah. listener, and if you are, welcome. welcome. And if you are a returning listener, welcome. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm Ross uh, Ross Barber Smith. Give me my full name, uh, and I'm uh, a web designer and owner of Electric Kiwi. And uh, yeah, I'm again. I, I'm not going to go on the whole spiel. Well, I'm from Canada. Know? We should probably say that I'm from Canada. If you're from Canada. I'm from Scotland. Hence the bridge, the Atlantic. This show is the bridge. This is kind of like a holiday special slash like behind the scenes. Like you guys can actually get to see how many times we screw up. Hey, oftentimes you screw up too, Russ. Mm-hmm. In all fairness, mm-hmm. but no one's going to get to see that today. You're like on the game. You know, I am the game. You are the... <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was a bit of a Walter White moment, wasn't it? It's like... Pretty much. I am the danger. <laughs> or something. <laughs> so uh, we're not just going to... Ramble on. We're going to ramble on. I mean, that's going to continue happening. You know, it comes with the territory. Yeah, really. but we actually do have some special uh, treats for you guys today. We do. We do. We've. Uh, well, why don't you let them know, Russ? Well, we've. Um, you know, we we do our interviews, but but here's something that most people know: when when we end the interview, it's a fake ending. The, the, the treats that we've got for you are some of the things we've been doing with a couple of guests after our interviews. Mm-hmm. So we've been playing a couple of little games with some of our recent guests. And uh, we 
are going to put them up on YouTube separately. But we also thought, why don't we put them all together in a nice little bundle? A gift, if you will. Oh. Uh, a holiday gift well, for you to unwrap and enjoy. Um, that's and, particularly uh, that's for, our, uh, for, for our audio listeners, because, I mean, it would be really weird if we just uploaded random audio clips without any sort of explanation. Everyone would They be would like, probably think that something gonna... had gone wrong. Well, you know, it usually to... does. <laughs> that's another thing people don't know. Yeah. It's how insane... The insane amount of work it goes into making this show, and uh, but although having said that, you know we we truly appreciate our sponsors and our and everyone that signed it up to uh, has signed up to Patreon to help uh, keep the show alive. It's uh it's 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 quite wonderful and humbling for us, um for people to actually open their wallets and metaphorically and give to us um so that we can keep bringing great interviews your way. Uh, and speaking of doing great interviews, th- this is actually we've officially done. Oh, one near 120 interviews and we mm-hmm. have officially been doing this for over two years we launched we began this in um i think it was july i think i presented the idea to you we in july started recording in either july or august yeah. and then we released our first episodes in october mm-hmm. 2014 14 yeah 2014 yeah. Um, so just over two years now that since we launched since mm-hmm. the and since everyone would know about us and uh, it's been one hell of a ride. Uh, we have <laughs> yeah, yeah. that around worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, this is kind of a, this is kind of a um, cap off, you know, for the year. But also I, I'd almost look at this as just a celebration of, you know, reaching a hundred episodes over the course of, of two years and a hundred plus at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost a, a two in one, you know, we want to give you um, some special treats, but we also want to, kind of recap what it's been like doing this show um which has been uh, it's been awesome we, I, you know what we we've connected with people that we would never have a chance to otherwise i think and friendships have built too out of this which is mm-hmm. wonderful you know um genuine friendships I, I we've 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 enjoyed uh interviewing just Almost about everyone <laughs> everyone <laughs> Just about everyone. <laughs> yeah. And we'll let you decide who those handful of people are. Who... It's a small handful. Very small f- handful. To be fair, Less it's a very, five. very small handful. Yeah. Um, and you're going to get that. And but... yeah, I, I, just to kind of, um, you know, echo what you've been saying, like when people talk about this show and they ask, you know, what's it like doing the show? And um, I always say to them that the biggest thing that kind of keeps us doing the show, I think, uh, is the connections that we've made and being mm-hmm. able to speak with people that you, you know, you can't just like, I mean, you could, but it'd be very weird just to message someone and say, Hey, do you want to just jump on Skype and talk? Even though we've got no, <laughs> we've never spoken to each other before. You don't know anything about me. Uh, but let's just have a conversation. And you know, yeah, some people might be up for it, but most people will be like, who's this weird, crazy guy? No, I think they do that anyway um, with us, but, <laughs> but I think as soon as you say, you know, Oh, it's, it's for a podcast or yeah, it's for yeah, a show. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, so that we can, you know, share your story with other people. Right. They're instantly much more likely to do it. And, yeah. you know, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been great. Sometimes it's been a bit scary, I guess, when we've, we've interviewed people that we've looked up to and who yeah. we were fans of for, well, what's, for a while, what was but, the first one for you? Like, I, I, I can think of a few for Nick me. Nick Thomas but. from Spill Canvas, probably, because they were my favorite, 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 favorite band when that, I was 18. That was 2015, right? That was one of our, yeah, that was actually quite an early one. I think that was like number 20. Wasn't it really? Two or 23, yeah. I'm going to do, do the research here. So you're saying number 23? 22 or 23. Okay, I'm going to see. Janet Devlin was number 21. Code. Let's see. We've got, uh, where is he here? All right, where are we? Nick Thomas, 24. That, wow, 24, I'm I was very close though. Wow, I, yeah. Do you know what? Actually, you could probably test me and I could wow. probably Janet Devlin. get within uh, uh, 21. 29. 29? Yeah, no, she was actually a couple okay. months after that. Do another one. Do another one. Uh, well, even... Okay, I've got a good one. Even though we launched with Tyler Hilton, uh-huh. he was the first... Well, we launched with Tyler Hilton, um, Dion Roy, and Charlotte Erickson, but yeah. he was the f- literally like production code yeah. number... Or he, not production code, but uh, release well, number one. When did yeah. we actually interview him? What number? I think he was 14 or something. 14, where is he? No, 14 was Jay Perry. Um, let's see, where is he? Tyler Hilton was 19. 
19. Okay. Yeah, well, because we, we, we had thought that we wanted 20 in the bag before we launched, right? Because we'll always yeah. stay ahead. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> There's been several situations where we are week to week trying uh-huh. to get, you know, everything ready and up. So that I mean, we've only missed one. We only missed one Tuesday, wasn't it? One one or two Tuesdays. Yep. And, and it went time. up the Wednesday. So. Went up the, we never missed a week. <clears throat> no. So I guess we should also say that's why... This month, there's not going to be an, an interview up every week. We we think after 100 plus episodes in two years, we deserve just a little bit of a break. And I mean, like, yeah. it's, 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 it's we're still going to be doing work. It's only going to be like a week or two of break. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and also, you know, it, it's also, uh, it's very hard to schedule people over the holidays. Who wants to be doing an interview mm. when they've got, you know, shopping to do, family to see, places to travel? It just makes sense, I think, for us just to take a bit of a break uh, and you know, come back in January with some really awesome stuff, which I <laughs> don't really know if we can, if we should say anything about what we've got coming up, but uh, you're going to want to stick around because uh, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> we did do some special segments with some people. However, we only came up with this idea a month ago. <laughs> so we really only yeah. have uh, four specialists for everyone. Um, next year we'll be more mindful of um, uh, gathering more, maybe for uh, next year's holiday special. Maybe fingers crossed. Um, so anyway, the, I think the first one we did was with JT from Famous mm-hmm. Last Words, and um, so uh, we're going to share that with you today, um, right now, I guess. <laughs> so here's our first insert it here. So we're sitting here talking to JT of Famous Last Words, and uh, we want to we want to play. What are we playing, Ross? We're playing Two Truths and a Lie. Yeah. So the way this game works is we want JT to tell us some gifts that he's received. Two of them are going to be true. One of them is not, and it's our job to guess which one's not. There are no prizes. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, I wish there were was a prize because I think I would win. Of course, uh, um, cocky as usual. But we'll see. <laughs> cocky as usual. All right, JT. Let's let's have it. Okay. Um, one year I had a puppy, one year I got an Xbox, um, and then one year I got a pooping reindeer. I'm going to, do you want to go first, Ross, or do you want me to go first? Uh, yeah, okay, I think, I think the Xbox is a lie because I think you're a PlayStation guy, (laughs) not an Xbox guy. Okay. I'm going to say that the pooping reindeer sounds so radical that I think it's actually real. (laughs) So I'm gonna say that you have not, you did not get a puppy for Chris, for Christmas ever. I did not get an Xbox. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, that's right. Yeah, you're a PlayStation guy, aren't you? I'm a PlayStation oh guy. Oh my man. God, Russ, come on, man. I'm just They're observing. I pay attention. I pay attention <laughs> to my questions, and I know that I know you said PlayStation, so that's that was my hint. I was like, I think. I think I like Ross better now. I know, apparently. He said it. <laughs> yes, I won that one. I won that one. Yeah. Okay. You're ridiculous. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was uh, it, it was great talking to JT. He was yeah. a, a really uh, really sweet guy, and uh, and he was our guinea pig for our yeah. game. And uh, basically, if the game went well, we would do more, and if the game didn't do well, we would still do more. And I think it went pretty well. So. Um, yeah. I'm quite happy with how that turned out. Um, well, I want to I want to ask you a question, yeah. Laraz. Uh You said that um, who was your who was the first kind of highlight for you? Nick Thomas from Spill Case right. because yeah. they were one of my favorite bands mm-hmm. uh, when I was younger. Um, I mean, there's been so many highlights, really. I like, think we I were think... we weren't. Sorry, to, uh, I wasn't prepared for how much of a fan base Janet Devlin had. Actually, she was one of the biggest. See, I was because I knew, like, because I knew over here how popular she was mm-hmm. because of X Factor. Um, although, we, we, really, her fan base grew more after that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was because of us. But, um, we of course, we, we yeah. made you, Janet. <laughs> yeah. No, we had her yeah. early on, actually. We got her, like, yep. I think we, we looked at it, it was, like, 29. And uh, that's quite early for a podcast, well, a web show and podcast, that, you know, we really didn't have much of an audience yet. And uh, she, they, her people were very kind to us, very sweet. Mm-hmm. And uh, still, she came back yep. for the Halloween special last year. Yep. Remember that? And she got all dressed up yeah, and she yeah, had like all great. the props and everything. Yeah, she we also was, had, uh, uh, who'd we have there? We also had, um, and for that, we had James Black from, yes, James Black. Uh, Finger we 11. had uh, uh, Andrew and, DeLeon. Yes. 
And Charlotte, uh, unfortunately, Erickson. we couldn't hear Andrew because we had so many <laughs> connection issues. And, and that's we before we Charlie discovered Erickson, our, our beloved uh, Zencaster. And yes, yeah, Charlotte true. Erickson, and, and also they don't really celebrate Halloween in Sweden. So <laughs> she was not <laughs> she really, about she wasn't it. the ideal uh, guest right. for, for that episode. But um, but we still had fun. It was still, it was still a, a good time. Um, but yeah, that was, <laughs> that but, was uh, funny. Yeah, no, you know what? It, it, it's been interesting because not only we've interviewed some some friends of ours over the last couple of years, but we also interviewed mm-hmm. like we were saying, like people. It went to one extreme to another. Like people were comfortable with and know some some guests we've had on. I knew you didn't know, and mm-hmm. vice versa. So sometimes we would turn each other on to well, you heard me turn each other. <laughs> on. Sometimes we would we would turn each other on to that that artist. Um, other times uh, we were surprised by, um, you know how how nice some people are, and also vice versa. In very rare occasions, but we won't go on about that. Um, for me, what stands out in my mind as one of the um, one of the guests that for me was like, wow, this is so cool. One of the early ones that that blew my mind was for sure Malora Harden. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. both you and I are huge fans of The Office. I. You I know. remember the day, right? Um, yeah. Because Marcio, you're much more organized now. <laughs> Before, you didn't really pay any attention to our calendar. So no, Marcio no. would message me in the morning. He'd, go, he'd be like, oh, do we have any interviews today? And I'd be like, yeah, we've got two interviews today, Marcio. Uh, they're this time and this time. <laughs> and he'd be like, all right, okay. Do, do, do you want to send me links to their music? And I was like, well, I think you know this one. And, uh, and he said, um, oh, oh, really? Who is it? And I was like, it was Malora Hardin. And he was like, shit now I'm nervous yeah and you were really nervous mm-hmm. before like you were like really nervous yeah I was that. um and I was nervous too because I like I, I was a big fan of The Office and I, I think we we just actually started re-watching it again and I was just reminded of how terrifying Jan <laughs> is as a character yeah. but I'd spoken to a couple of people who knew who'd met Melora or, or worked with her so her publicist was like you're gonna have a really great time. She's so funny. She's really charismatic. Great personality. Yeah. And I, I was speaking to someone else. It was Suze, uh, Suzanne Polinski, mm-hmm. who we had in the show more recently. But she had a friend who uh, work, was on set with Melora Harden at some point, and she's like, "Oh, she's really nice. She's really, really funny." And I was like, "I am terrified because I just got in my head that she is Jan. Then she is going to be just like Jan, and I am just going to be like falling apart and just terrified." But She's nothing like Jen. No, uh, she's a sweetheart. Um, you say that we had Suzanne more recently, by the way. I'm looking at this now. What do we got? We had Suzanne Plansky. She's number 77. Well, Malora more recently Harden was only 66. She was only 11 interviews after Melora Harden. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's so weird because Melora's interview feels like such a long time ago. Well, you know what? Melora, Melora uh, I think we did it like a year ago, but released it in like February. I think because there was a gap where I we think, weren't, we took a little, like we didn't, like we take, a, I think we released it pretty soon after we did it though. I well, think we didn't want to hold off on it too long. Another thing to let people know too is we often take breaks from doing interviews, but this is the first time we were taking a break from releasing interviews. Mm. That makes sense, right? Yeah. So Melora, that was, that was great. But, uh, you know, she's, she was very genuine and sweet. You know, I had told her at that time that, um, we were just a conversation. I had said, oh, I'm heading out to LA with uh, my wife and kids in like next month or so. And before I can even finish my sentence, she's like, oh, do you want to meet up for like some dinner or some coffee? I'm like, uh-huh, sure. And she very kindly um, not only took me out to dinner, but brought me out to a film premiere of hers. Uh, I was her date. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it was very, it was, it was really cool. It was really, really cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then shortly after we had Lita Wise, American Idol winner. Um, you know, we had a, a lot of really cool people on. I'm actually I'm cheating here because I'm looking at the list. Um, I know you are. I can you know, because I, I I can't trust my memory right now. <laughs> um, another another really cool one though was Eliana Douglas. Yep, that was that stands out to my my mind for sure. And she was also exactly what you expect her to be, just like she is in yeah. any other interviews. It's it's no mm-hmm. pretension. There's nothing that she was the same way before the interview as she is as you see during the interview. The only the only regret I have with those interviews and uh, is and the same goes for the next person I'm going to talk about is that we had yet to kind of get our production to the point we wanted to. So, you know, it, the video portion kind of looks a little funky and we and we didn't um, we didn't really have our audio under control yet as we did over the last few months. We've, we've really gotten mm-hmm. our audio and video a lot better. So those interviews are a little bit choppy. Um, Eliana Douglas actually worked out all right, but Melora Hardin, um, or maybe, maybe I, know, I know for sure I'm thinking Jason Flom, which is the other person that was blew my mind because Jason Flom is like one of the most... 
powerful people in the music industry, I guess. And, um, yeah. and, uh, that, that, you know, <clears throat> this show has actually made me not really get starstruck by anyone anymore as much as it's just like, oh, wow, this is really cool that we're talking to these people. Um, I don't think, it, I think it's important not to put anyone above anyone else or put them on a pedestal by any means, but it's just, it's still really cool to see what they've done. Like, you know, the names that you can just, that, that, that guy has been responsible for, um, the artist he's, oh, my son's talking right now. <laughs> He's aw- he's awake. We're gonna have to stop in a minute. Um, the just the names, everyone from Lenny Kravitz to um, Lord, and you know, Thirty Seconds Tomorrow. Every, all these all these artists that he helped break. You know, um, it is quite it is quite monumental. You know, mm-hmm. so that was interesting to have him on and chat with them. But that was that's the interview I'm thinking of. That the audio, everything just kept messing up, and it's like, oh yeah. my god, there was a lot of technical yeah. problems and. Um, it was just a shame because um, it, 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 I was not going to say it made, it, look, it made us look bad, but it obviously reflects on us a little bit, even though it's yeah. completely out of our control. It's really hard to not let that kind of throw you off a little bit. Especially when we were already um, nervous, right? Yeah. We were already nervous. Yeah. But uh, um, it was what it was, was though. Yeah. You know? And another one that stands out for me, um, which is one that people really responded to, was uh, Shelley Pikin. Yeah, um, I was going to say her too. I, I, I yeah. grew up listening to the song Bitch, which I, I yep. loved. So that was cool that she wrote it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and it's funny because um, she wrote um, Who You Are by Jessie J, which is uh, another song that I really like. And uh, and um, I'm watching this year's X Factor and one of the girls in this year's X Factor, someone I've, I've never felt as um, invested in a contestant on a show like this as I do with this girl, this Finnish girl called Sara Alto. To, you have to say it in her accent, otherwise okay. it's not right. <laughs> it's a lot of A's. There's a lot of A's. Um, and she actually did, um, she performed the song that Shelley Pikin wrote and uh, and she was doing a Facebook Live and I just happened to see her and I was like, oh, hey, it's like I loved your performance of Who You Are. I actually know the writer of the song. I'm just going to send her a, a tweet with a link to your performance because I think she'd like to see it. And she was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Wow, you know her. Ah. Uh, which is really cool. And I was like, I've, I was like, well, I'm not really dropping the name. I'm just saying, I, you know, I can send her this. So I'm going to send her this. Right. Um, which felt like a pretty cool thing to do. And uh, I don't know. She was just. She was another one of those people. Very warm. Very. Just very very nice. Like she had yeah. a lot of success, but she's clearly the same person that that she's always been. And it was really interesting to hear her story and her, the advice that she would offer to people. Um, for things to kind of come full circle, I think the highlight for me, um, for me uh, over the last two years plus is definitely interviewing Nate Barklow because, you know, he was of the band Finch that was just one of my absolute favorite bands for, and yours too, for mm-hmm. a very large chunk of my, uh, you know, mid to late teens and early twenties and uh, hugely influential on me. And, uh, you know, not only did we bring him onto the show, you know, um, he was just so kind, so generous with his time. And, um, you know, I'm very proud to say that we were the first and only to get an interview with him after um, he left Finch. You know, so we got the exclusive, which was very uh, kind of surreal. It was very, very neat. <laughs> I'll say. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the response to the interview has been one of our, our best responses, I think. Um, to I'd say that's probably one of our top three or five response-wise that people uh, have liked. Um, so, you know, in addition to that, um, you know, he was the second person that we did a... Yeah, we, that we, we used him as a little test for this holiday special since it went so yeah. well with JT. We're like, all right, we'll do it with Nate. <laughs> And, uh, well, you know what? Enough talking. Here it is. So, okay. I guess one year <clears throat> I got um, a Christmas ornament that was <clears throat> the, <clears throat> excuse me, the family truckster from, uh, what do you call it? Christmas Vacation, the movie. Um, I also got a canteen holder for, like, camping. You hold your canteen in it. And uh, also, uh, let's see what else. Did I'm I trying get? to read his body language to see which one's the real one. <laughs> what else did I get that year? Um, 
I feel like we need like some tense music going on right now for the suspense. I, don't know. <laughs> I think it needs to be so bad at that. I'm so bad at that. I'm gonna guess that the third uh, one's why. No, I'm joking. Um <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and a Hawaiian shirt. I also got a Hawaiian shirt. I don't know what to think anymore. Okay, can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Do you still have any of these gifts? Um, I have one of them still. Okay. Oh, my God. And that's not really going to help me at no, all. No, why'd you even ask no. what does that I don't have a clue. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really don't know You're why I asked that You're hoping he'd slip and say something or what? Kind of. <laughs> Didn't happen. Okay. Um... Am I want me to go? Am I gonna go first on this one? You can go first, yeah. Oh my god, I'm. I want to say the Hawaiian shirt because you were you were taking a long time to think of that last one, but I think it's the canteen. Now don't tell us yet. Don't tell us yet. So that's I I'm thinking think, it's the canteen. That's the fake one. That's the lie. I think you were putting some acting skills to good use by pretending to not remember that you got a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> so I think that you did get a Hawaiian shirt, yeah. and I think that the Christmas ornament is the uh, is the lie. All right. You're both wrong. It was the Hawaiian shirt. Oh, <laughs> it seems so obvious that that was the fake one. I know. That's why I thought you were It took the longest thing. time without, and I was trying to think of a lie. Oh, man. Oh. All right, well. None of us win. At least okay. we both At least we both I guess, equally lose, Ross. I guess I was better at that than I thought I was going to be. You are, yeah. <laughs> oh so which gosh. one of them do you still have? Um, I still have the canteen holder, I believe. No kidding. Yeah. Well, it's just craziness. And again, crazy. I don't know why I asked that because I'm not going to ask you to show it to us. <laughs> oh, anything. Ross is like this. Very interesting. We're very good at our <laughs> yeah. jobs. We're very good at interviewing. Yeah. So, so where are you going to follow that up with now, Ross? What does that? Me- what does that I'm mean? I'm being a good. I'm being a good listener. I'm just not very good. Uh, whatever comes after listening, <laughs> talking. At least Ross didn't win. <laughs> yeah, but you got us, Nate. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, aside from connecting with so many awesome people through doing the interviews we connect with a lot of awesome people who watch the show listen Mm -hmm. to the show um you know and it's really great when we get when we hear you know your comments and you tell us you know what you like and not so much what you don't like (laughs) well sometimes sometimes tough love we need to know that you know you know we did we did have a guest we won't mention but we did have a guest that we were actually quite irritated with but you know because he had suggested that you know, you do segments, you know, he had said, you know, these interviews are too mm-hmm. long. No one's going to sit down for 30. Well, some people are, but you know, you can't share just a 30 minute interview all the time. You need segments. You need like two minute pieces that people are interested in. You know what? Mm-hmm. You were right, Shervin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were. You were right. We were, I was quite, I was irritated with him for weeks. I'm not going to lie. Or at least like uh, at I least a few days were. later I was. And then, you know, know, he was right. He got into my I subconscious think, and And my, my right. thoughts are his heart was in the right place. Yeah. He just didn't execute his delivery very right, well. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> we'll forgive you, you know, though. That's, that's my, that's, those are my thoughts on it. Right, um, right. It came off a yeah, bit harsh, but, you know, maybe, maybe we needed to hear that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton, Joe Centenary, The Rockstar Advocate, Buck Naked Soap Company, 30 Roses, Wendy Donaldson, and Social Surge. All links are in the show notes. Make sure to check that out. Uh, they help keep the show alive. And we will be back next week with part two of the special. But yeah, we, we do appreciate, you know, everyone that watches the show and listens to the show. And, um, you know, it's because of you guys that we, that we still do this. So um, we're going to wrap up just now. Marcia literally is wrapped up <laughs> yeah. warm. But it's not the end, um, though. It's not the, not the end. end. We just we didn't want to give you all of our tricks in one go. Yeah, that's what you it know? is. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be back next week. Mm-hmm. Um, although we're actually lying because we're going to record this. We're gonna, it's all right now. Like, we're just basically um, spreading it out. <laughs> but yeah, you're going to get some more of us mm-hmm. in, your, in your eyes and your ears next week. <sighs> so, uh, so until then, we're going to leave you hanging. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> She came wrapped up like a Christmas gift